Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. In the early days of filming wildlife, as you'll see tonight, researchers had to capture animals in order to observe and learn from them. But that's no longer the case today. Modern technology such as drones and satellite tracking offer new ways to study animals in their natural habitat with less intrusion from human touch. Wild Kingdom set the gold standard for nature programming and introduced generations of young people to the wonders of the natural world. Fortunately, the successful research that began with our original series helped many animals make a comeback from the threat of extinction. And that's good news for the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD-TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. One of the world's most beautiful wading birds is the greater flamingo of Asia Minor. It's a bird about which little is known. Even its migration routes are a mystery. Conservationists want to preserve the huge bird, but need to know more about it in order to properly protect it. Recently, I was invited by the government of Iran to observe their flamingo research project at Lake Razaye. Each spring, the birds return there, but no one knows for certain where they spend the winter. Biologists are putting identification rings on their legs and spraying their backs with a harmless blue paint in an effort to learn the answer. The flamingos are captured with relative ease in the midst of their molt when they can't fly. This important continuing flamingo research is occurring on islands located here in Lake Razaye of Western Iran. It's a very important conservation project which can take place only when the flamingos return to Razaye. We're flying to the largest island in Lake Razaye where the director of the Department of the Environment, Escander Perus, has arranged for me to observe the flamingo research. Lake Rezaye is 80 miles long by 25 miles wide and has no outlet. As a result, Rezaye is one of the saltiest lakes in the world, twice as salty as the sea. The group of islands below are called the Doguzlars. put down on the mainland where there's a good landing strip. From here we will go to Kabudan Island, the only island where fresh water is available and where the Iranian Environmental Department has biological research facilities. Not far from here, a motorboat is waiting to take me to the rendezvous with Iranian biologists on Kabudan Island. Director Firuz tells me where I am to find the boat which will take me to their dock. summer months, greater flamingos come here to nest and undergo a molt of their plumage.
They're not here every year, and scientists aren't yet sure why. In summers, when they do come, numbering perhaps 50,000, research activities move into high gear. The Department of the Environment has the only dock existing here, and it forms a hub for the studies being done. The few different bird species attracted here are all researched, but the most important project is learning more about the flamingos and where they are when they're not here. The extensive leg banding program currently in progress is expected eventually to answer that riddle. Iranian biologists have been studying the flamingos here for 10 years, and their work has interested scientists everywhere. That's the case with Dr. Philip Call, a flamingo specialist. Advisor to the Iranians is Dr. Francis Argyle of Great Britain, who has worked closely with them during their study. From here, I'll keep in radio contact with these two scientists during their research today on another island. Iranian biologists are preparing for another animal project here, which I've been invited by game officer Hassan Amani to observe. They're taking a wild sheep census. The biologist will drive the animals past a particular spot so that they can be counted. We will observe this activity from a point close by. The largest of Rezaye's islands, Kabudan, is the only one on which wild sheep live, since it's the only one where water is available to drink. The first of the sheep move easily along one of their barely visible paths, herded by the biologist far behind them. We'll endeavor to keep from startling them and interrupting their progress toward the spot where they're being counted. These animals are known as Armenian sheep or red sheep, and they've existed here over 400 years. At the last census, there were about a thousand of them, but they've probably increased in number. These animals are believed to be the progenitors of domestic sheep. I'm in contact now with the party of biologists who are presently moving into position for today's flamingo research. Soon the two boats will separate and go about their specific duties. Hassan and I will move to a high promontory from which we should be able to see their activities near an island not far from us. The Iranians will capture flamingos, while doctors Call and Argyle will set up a holding pen on shore. I could see a long way from a high point near the lake shore and now attempted to locate the place where Phil Call and Francis Argyle were coming ashore to build a pen for the captured flamingos. The little island where the scientists will be working is not far from here. Like all of these islands, it is arid and free of predators. In areas along the shore here, the flamingos build their nests and raise their young. 
The boats are coming ashore now, and the men will unload the burlap material and other gear for making the holding pen, along with the necessary equipment for measuring and marking the birds. Dr. Philip Call is one of the world's foremost authorities on flamingos. His work on flamingos has taken him to South America, India, and Africa, and now he's collating the Iranian research with his own studies. This Lake Rezaye flamingo project may permit Dr. Call to reach some pertinent conclusions. I'll check with him now on today's activities. Not far offshore from where we've erected the flamingo holding pen, the Iranian biologists are moving into position to capture and ban some of the young flamingos which are unable to fly. Biologist Mohammad Khalili handles their boat, and Mohammad Ali Ashchani will ban the fledglings scooped from the water by Ismail Karoum. Not wishing to disturb the young flamingos any more than necessary, they'll be swiftly banded, then immediately released in the same vicinity so they can rejoin their group. of the flamingos here has been going on for five years, but not enough birds have been banded yet. Nor has the study continued long enough for any really far-reaching conclusions to be drawn. All that will come in time with the recapture of the banded birds. Biological findings of the Iranians are broadening scientific knowledge of the natural history of these flamingos. This is the best time to study them. As the adults undergo molt, they simply cannot fly, and so can easily be captured and marked. And the biologists will start capturing them now. the adult flamingos being captured now will be taken to shore for more detailed work on them. It isn't necessary with adult birds, as it is with the young, to return them to the exact area where they were captured.
will be the last they'll capture in this first effort. And now, they'll come to shore here so the measurements can be taken and identification markings made on the birds. of the birds they've captured will be transferred from the sacks they're in to the holding pen Dr. Argyle and I have erected. Then, the Iranian biologists will quickly conduct their necessary field work. the greater flamingo is not presently endangered. The Iranians know that such conditions might occur in the future. And the broader their knowledge becomes of this large bird, the greater will their ability be to protect it and prevent its extinction. With the flamingos now captured and in the holding pen, the Iranian wildlife biologists began making the necessary measurements and marking the birds for continued study. The processing of the birds is continued by Muhammad Ali Ashjani. The first step is to gently and carefully squeeze a metal band onto the bird's leg, which will remain with the flamingo for the rest of its life. It's a permanent identification with the appropriate numbering and other data stamped into the metal. It is this identification data which Muhammad relays so it can be logged in the research record. Though it's a wading bird, the flamingo's webbed feet allow it to swim well. It's obvious why these birds were so easily captured. There's been such a loss of primary wing feathers from the molt that there is no way the bird can fly until new feathers, still in sheaths, fully develop. One of the ways to determine sex is measurement of beak growth. Males have the longer beaks, so each beak is measured and sex recorded. The peculiar beak of this huge wading bird is extremely well adapted for gathering its food from the water. The flamingo uses its serrated beak to strain the water and collect the tiny brine shrimp which live in the extremely salty waters of Lake Rezeye. The next step in the processing is to weigh the bird so that the recorded figure can be compared with the weight of the bird when it is subsequently recaptured. One final marking of the bird remains to be done. And this is one which will permit the biologists to make observations and identifications from long distances. The new back feathers of the flamingo are sprayed with a permanent but harmless blue paint. The paint on the back will aid in long distance identification here and in other areas of Iran where the birds might migrate. This will help scientists to determine the flamingo's migrational pattern and therefore know where they go when they leave here. Once all the birds have been measured and marked, they are replaced in the bags and returned to the boat so the wildlife biologists can release them in the open waters of the lake. This work will continue over a period of several weeks, for all of the adult flamingos are not flightless simultaneously. By the time the birds we've just worked on have regrown their flight feathers, 
Others, now flying, will have molted and become flightless, and they can be captured and marked. We'll alert Marlin on the other island that the work on our first specimens is over, and we're going to move to a new area as soon as the birds are released. A considerable sense of accomplishment is experienced by the Iranian wildlife biologists in doing this flamingo research. Every bird studied and released adds to the knowledge of the scientific world. Soon, many of the mysteries regarding this great bird will be solved as a result of the studies done here at Lake Rezaieh. Then, the bird and its habitat can become better protected. As new primary feathers develop, the power of flight returns. certain additional vital research will be accumulated next year if and when the flamingos return to Rezaie. One of the most important aspects of working with animals lies in taking steps to help ensure their survival. The work being done on the greater flamingo of Iran is a case in point. The bird is not an endangered species now, and hopefully never will be. Yet, as man expands his own horizons, valuable natural habitat is sometimes lost. The flamingo in Iran may be saved simply through learning where it winters, and then taking steps to preserve that winter habitat. As awareness of the problem becomes known, different governments may begin cooperating in the work toward the common good. And as they do, migratory species of all kinds can be assured a protected spot in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.